I gave you three results that are quotable results that you should like know just like that, okay? The first one was simply our definition for the exponential function, emphasis on the, like the particular one with a base of e. What happens when you differentiate e to the x? Just get back e to the x. Right? Okay. Now from that, we took that as our basis to say, well, you know what? E is a special base. But once you know what that is, once you set it in stone, you can work out the do for an exponential function with any base, right? So we said if it's a to the x, where a is some real number, then the derivative is very similar. What's the difference? It's, it's a to the x times log a. Now, by the way, it's worth mentioning. I mean, log a is a, a number, right? So it's customary to write numbers first and then like variable stuff later. But you can probably see why I tried it. I don't usually write the log a first because then you just got two a's in a row and you're like, which, wait, is the log the whole thing or is it just that? And it's just, don't bother. That's nice and it rolls off the tongue too. a to the x log a. From there, we very, very quickly saw that you can also differentiate log functions on their own, particularly when they're base e. We'll talk about what happens when they're not base e in a second. What was the result that we determined? It's 1 on x, right? 1 on x. Curious little result. Yes? For the second one, do we need to put working? Like, you know how you did the Yep, sure. The question, like, is do I need to justify this? And the answer is, not anymore, <laughs> not, not any more than you would need to justify this. Um, you might recall, just like all the other results, we got this from first principles, right? And it took us quite a few steps to get from here to here, but all of these are quotable now. You can just go for it, okay? All right, now I'm going to put to you um, a quick challenge, and I'm not going to do it on the board right away. If this is with base E, right, this is base E, a natural progression is, well, this is with base E and this is with any base. This is with base E. Well, what would you then conclude about this? I will just let you have a think about it first, okay? Uh, I mean, the comparison is very similar. This transition here to this transition here. It's not as complicated as it looks. So give it a crack, okay? I will let you try and um, I'll put a question mark there for you to have a think about how you might work that out. Okay. It involves some of the similar kind of algebraic gymnastics that we did in the first and second case. Now, uh, I want to add on to that some extra bits that we concluded, which is that if you've got an exponential function, base e, but you don't just have x up the top, you actually have a function up there, right? In other words, if you have a chain rule situation, right? We saw, we know what the chain rule looks like for polynomials, we've done that to death, but now, We've got it for exponential. So what did it look like? What was the result we had here? F dash. Yeah, very good. F dash. And then when you differentiate e to whatever, you just end up with that same thing back, right? So that's why you did the inside, you did the outside. You did the inner function, outer function. Okay? What we did not establish, because we kind of ran out of time, is what happens for correspondingly for log functions, right? What if you have log of another function and you want to differentiate that? Okay, this is a beautiful little result. Morning. Um, again, <coughs> we want to think just like always it works in chain rule, right? You should differentiate the inside, then the outside, right? Inside, then outside. So the inside is just f dash, right? That's you don't need to do any I mean I don't actually know in this case what the function is, so I'll just call it f dash. Now we're up to the part where you differentiate the outside part, that's a log function. When you differentiate a log function, you get 1 over whatever's in there, right? 1 over, in this case, x. So over here, I'm going to get 1 over this thing here, right? So I could write, um, don't write this, I could write this, right? That's, that's the derivative of the outside function. You can see 1 over x, 1 over f of x. But being that I'm now finished, like I might as well, I'm done, right? I might as well just chuck this on the bottom and make this a single expression, not worry about it as a product, okay? The derivative of the log function is f dash on f. It's a nice, it's really simple and elegant, okay? Good morning. So, by the way, just because, you know, now that you know stuff about differentiation, we're not gonna do it right away, but when we get to integration, you can see that everything you've, you've now seen on the board gives you something that you can look for 
that will tell you you can integrate it, right? So for example, if I saw something like 2x over x squared plus 1, and I was trying to integrate that, we're not quite used to seeing, like using this as a lens to see our integrands yet, but do you see that the numerator is the derivative of the denominator? Do you recognize that? In other words, this is in the form f dash on f. F dash on f, which means that's where it came from, right? So my answer to this would be log of x squared plus 1 plus my constants, okay? We'll talk about absolute values later. Like people, that's a big deal. I'm, I'm not going to put that there. There's no reason why I should put that there yeah. at the moment, okay? But you can see this will start to become something you recognize. Now I can integrate that. That's a whole bunch more things that I can So um, this is what we're, this is now our basis. Like we can, uh, I'll rub off this red part now. Everything that's on the board right now, you can quote, like we've, we've established it, we've proved it, and, and now you can simply use them, okay? Now, I'm going to have a look at a question which I feel like I did not assign. Hold on, I wrote it, can you? No, perfect, I did not assign it. It's question 17. Question 17? Now, this is a marvelous little question, okay? What's great about it is if you have a look at it on the face of it, you're like, what do I do with this, okay? Because just on the face of it, remember, like, look, conveniently, I put everything on the board, right? If you were to pick uh, which, which of the rules that I know, which one does this apply to, right? Or which rule applies to it, I guess. And it's not entirely clear. Right? It's not entirely clear. I mean, you could sort of say, maybe it's this one. Maybe it's that one. Okay. But of course, you run into a problem, which is that n is supposed to be a constant. Like it's x squared, or x to the power of a half, or x to the power of minus 5. And it's not a constant here. Okay. So then you sort of go back to the drawing board, and you're like, well, maybe, maybe it's this one. Right? x is in the power. But you end up with the same problem. That here, a is a constant. Right? And it's kind of important that it's a constant. That's how it all works out. Right? So this is kind of neither of these straight away, which is why, like, what I love about this question is it defies our desire to just fit questions into rules. Right? That's not what mathematics is about. Actually, there's a very surface level of looking at maths. The point of this question is not to look at it and say, which rule should I apply? My question to you, and I'm going to give you a few minutes to play with it, is what can I do with this? How can I work with this problem in such a way that I can reframe it so that tools that I'm aware of, and it might be some combination of those, can be employed on this. Okay? There are two main ways to solve this. I'll show you both. But before I do, I want you to have a crack at it. What could you possibly do with this thing? Okay? I guess my clue is, you remember when we were doing some, um, some of those trick identities, and you had to solve something that looks sort of nice and neat on both sides? You're like, what do I do with this? There's nothing obvious to simplify. There is nothing obvious to simplify here. It's kind of as simple as it gets. So if you want to make any progress on it, you're going to have to make it a bit messier. You're going to have to make it a bit worse before it gets better. That's my clue. Give it a crack.